Hello and welcome to another video from AV Forums. I am Phil Hinton and I've been the editor since 2003. Also a fully trained and qualified THX and ISF professional calibrator with 18 years of experience. In today's video, we have our review of the LG C1 OLED TV. Before we talk about the performance of the LG C1, if you like our reviews and want to see more of them while supporting our channel, then please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell to be informed every time we upload new video content. You can also find a link to our Patreon in the video description and don't forget to check out the TV forums at Europe's largest AV community on AV forums to see what owners think of this TV after normal use in their own homes. We publish our in-depth TV reviews which include measurements and calibration results first on AV forums, usually a while before our YouTube videos, so make sure you head over to check them out as they contain more in-depth calibration details and testing. We reviewed the LG C1 in May 2021. If you want to cut straight to the chase and see if the LG C1 is for you, here's our quick verdict, with a more detailed look at the TV to follow this. The LG C1, like the previous C models, is the sweet spot in the 2021 OLED TV range from LG and offers a few small changes over last year's C10. It's available in screen sizes ranging from 48, 55, 65, 77 and a whopping 83 inches. The design of the C1 hasn't changed much at all from previous generations and has the same stand designs and chassis layout, but this year there are some colour changes. The stand on our review model was a silver finish with a white rear to the panel that LG calls vanilla. A new remote control is also included this year along with new menu designs and a new look to webOS 6.0 smart TV, which you'll either love or hate, but more on that later. The C1 supports most of the HDR formats including HDR10, HLG Hybrid Log Gamma, Dolby Vision and Dolby Vision IQ, and the excellent filmmaker mode that matches industry standards for content mastering. There is no HDR10 Plus support, but we don't see that as an issue given the small amount of content that uses the format. The LG C1 is a superb performer with excellent black levels, superb shadow details and natural and lifelike colours. Image accuracy out of the box in filmmaker mode is also top drawer and allows viewers to see content as it was mastered and intended to be seen. Motion is also excellent and we had no major issues to report at all with the C1. With HDR and Dolby Vision content the performance again is superb with excellent motion, colours and brightness. Peak highlights are detailed with most content and the tone mapping followed these standards well with no unnecessary clipping or black crush. Skin tones look natural and scenes had an added depth thanks to the nicely detailed shadows, mid-tones and peak highlights. Gamers will also find the new game optimizer menu and picture settings a nice upgrade with four HDMI 2.1 40 gigabits per second ports which support variable refresh rate, auto low latency mode and HDIG. There's also G-Sync and AMD support which makes the G1 one of the most advanced gaming TVs of 2021. The input lag is also impressive at 12.5 milliseconds at 4K60 and 9.5 milliseconds with the prevent input delay setting. If you already have a C9 or C10, then the C1 is probably not an upgrade path for you, unless you are desperate for the new menus and smart TV layout. The performance is incrementally improved with better just above black performance without flashing or floating blacks, but all other measurable attributes remain very similar. As an overall package, the C1 is a very accomplished OLED TV, which will fulfil the needs of many different users looking for the best movie, TV show and gaming experience in a package that includes almost every streaming service and app at your disposal, and with superb and accurate image quality. The price is also very reasonable, and that means the LG C1 wins our Best Buy award. The design of the LG C1 chassis is identical to the last few years of C models with a very thin panel to the top and a rear that gets a little bit bigger two thirds of the way down which houses the connections, electronics and speakers. There's also cable management built into the stand. The connections are around the back and are sideways and backwards facing. The sideways lineup features a CI slot, three HDMI ports and a USB. Rearwards is another HDMI, two USB ports, an RF and satellite antenna, headphone and audio output, as well as a digital audio out and a LAN port. 
There is also built-in Apple AirPlay 2, Bluetooth and dual band Wi-Fi. All four HDMI ports are HDMI 2.140 gigabits per second, accepting 10-bit 4K 120 at 444 signals and is compatible with Dolby Vision, HLG and HDR10. HDMI 2 is EARC and ARC compatible. I really like the new Magic remote control design with its longer body, sleeker frame and a notch at the rear so it sits in the hand easily. All the buttons you need are positioned within a thumb's reach when held in one hand with new direct access keys for streaming services such as Disney+. Plus. Once again, Filmmaker Mode proves to be exceptionally accurate out of the box, with a grayscale result that is only a shade away from being perfect. There is a slight rise in red energy towards white, and we have a darkening of the gamma at 90% stimulus, but everything else looks very good. Our Delta E errors are all under the visible threshold of 3, which means that although we can see some slight errors in the graph, with actual viewing material of TV and film content on the screen, they are invisible to the eye. Moving to the Rec. 709 colour gamut results, and we can see that they are also very good out of the box in filmmaker mode. There are a few errors here with red oversaturation and magenta has a hue error towards red, but other points are there or thereabouts and for an out of the box preset the results are very good. With every TV out of the box there will be some slight differences due to panel and component variants, but filmmaker mode has proven to be the most accurate and consistent preset we've seen in TVs to date. As we can see with the grayscale results we managed to obtain absolute reference level results with a flat grayscale and gamma tracking and delta E errors of 0.1 and below. There are no visible errors seen at all and we couldn't get any better results than what we managed here. The Rec. 709 results look a little bit better as well but we had to take some care to balance out the errors without using too much processor power within the corrections. If you push the CMS or colour management system on any LG too hard you can get lovely looking graphs but major posterization errors and artifacts with actual viewing material on screen. So some care is required when making adjustments, however we did manage to get very accurate looking gamut results with most points at 75% and below where they should be and Delta E errors well under 3, which means there are no visible errors on screen. Starting with the most accurate HDR filmmaker mode, we measured 688 nits at the industry standard 10% window and 139 nits at 100%. The HDR cinema mode measured 10% at 690 nits and 100% at 139 nits, with the previously reviewed OLED EVO G1 putting in a 10% of 741 nits and 100% at 152 nits. Given such small differences between the two, our eyes would simply never be able to see these changes in brightness, so in that respect they are almost identical for perceived brightness. We will be doing a full comparison between the C1 and G1 very soon. As well as peak brightness, another important part of an HDR image is the PQ EOTF tracking to ST2084 and the tone mapping employed. Looking at the PQ EOTF, we can see that it follows the standard correctly with the right brightness before it rolls off and hard clips at the peak brightness in filmmaker mode of 688 nits. It employs the same tone mapping and tracking for 1000 and 4000 nit content. The DCI P3 color gamut saturation tracking within BT2020 is also very good on the LG C1 with just a smidge of over a saturation with red, but all other points are there or thereabouts within the results. It doesn't quite cover the full gamut size, but it is close and there are no obvious colour issues when viewing TV and film content on screen in HDR. We measured BT2020 at 73% XY and 80% UV, with P3 coming in at 96% XY and 99% UV. I might sound like a broken record, but filmmaker mode has proven to be an excellent addition to many TVs over the last 12 months, and yet again it does what it sets out to do with the C1 out of the box. 
Images are incredibly accurate for SDR and HDR10 playback with superb colours, white balance and motion. Panel uniformity was very good indeed with our review sample with a clean look at various brightness levels and no major issues such as dirty screen effect, vignetting or banding. There is a very slight colour shift to cyan at the edges of the screen when looking from our angle. With just above black 5%, we had a very slightly bright left side and a slightly darker right with some light visible bands seen on the test patterns towards the centre. However, none of these issues was visible within normal TV and film viewing, even in a dark room with dark scenes. The just above black performance and floating blacks were an issue in Dolby Vision and HDR10 on the C10 last year, but I can report no issues at all with the C1. We also didn't notice any issues with low level black dithering when watching from our usual viewing distances, with a fade to and from blacks looking superb with no signs of gradational breakups or crushing. The C1 was a superb performer with SDR, HDR and Dolby Vision content with the kind of picture quality you would expect. It looks identical to the G1 and the G10 from last year. For the majority of my viewing test, I saw no real difference. The improvements on the C1 are for just above black flashing and better, more controlled shadow detailing in dark scenes with fades to and from black. In all other aspects, our measurements were almost identical between the two with superb accuracy and black levels. If you have a C9 or a C10, there's no real advantage to updating to the C1 as things stand. All are excellent performers. When compared to the G1, I also think they perform identically in most aspects, with perhaps just a smidge more HDR peak brightness detail visible from isolated testing on both screens. We will be doing an in-depth side-by-side testing, so look out for that review and video very soon. Another new update this year on the LG C1 is WebOS 6.0, which sees a big change in how the smart TV system operates. Gone is the launcher bar at the bottom of the screen, replaced with a full screen smart TV menu system, which obviously fills the entire viewable image area. The new layout has stacks of boxes with three large top blocks which are pretty useless at this moment in time with no appreciable use case. I think eventually they'll turn into banner ads. Below is a horizontal list of trending now features and there's a horizontal list of apps where you can highlight and choose to launch an app from a large choice of Apple TV+, Disney+, Now, Prime Video, Netflix, YouTube, BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, all four and more. The next layer of tiles is the home dashboard with connections that you have access to, including AirPlay, and then we have a series of further layers highlighting available content in other applications. The menu system has also been updated with a new design and layout, which will take some getting used to if you're familiar with LG TVs. It's still intuitive to use, but certain picture controls now live under new sub-menus, which can be confusing at first, but it all works well with the Magic Remote Pointer. I go into far more detail about the C1 performance in our written review on AV forums, so please head over and read the full in-depth review. If you'd like to see more reviews like this, then please like and consider subscribing to the channel, and you can also support us through Patreon, the links are in the description. Thanks for watching.